Got five bars of 4G here. Wow. You can stream in 4K. Yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to. Okay. We are live from the last day. Oh, no, not the last day. It's the first day. The Costa Brim Grand Final. Um, we'll go for a drive soon, show you all the boats that are around, but uh, everyone's nearly checked out. The time is quarter to seven. Australian Daylight Saving Time. I should have audio that's working. Um, we sh this is Lake Macquarie, we should be able to have signal. We should be able to stream most of the day today. The way it's gonna work is we've got four boats with cameras on, three of them should be live streaming. Myself, Chris Hickson, Jamie McEwen. Don't watch those other guys, they're boring. Um, we've got Warren Carter next to me here, he's running a camera today as well. So each night we'll come back, while these guys are rigging their rods, we're gonna be editing up the highlights packages so we can bring you all of the action on the water. now. When Wazza chokes and gets a donut today, we're going to take that camera off his boat, put it on someone who's leading. So we're going to try and take some of these cameras and move them on to have them in the best possible places. Um, the other thing you can do is you can watch Facebook Live on ABT's Facebook page. Simon Goldsmith will be out on Saturday and Sunday doing live stuff on the water. He'll be doing live stuff at the start here too, but um, once we know who's, who's where in this tournament, we're going to be sending Simon out and he'll be spending a couple of days on the water doing the great stuff like he did at the ABT Brim Grand Final. Uh, I'm fishing with Rob Neeshaw today, ABT stats man. He's hiding behind here, but he will be featuring in this video later on while well, I'm netting his keggers. Um, of course, this is a shared weight event, so between the, five, the two of us, we've got to catch our five biggest brim. It doesn't matter who catches them, and there will definitely be some high fives and air routing going on when uh, Robbie just pounds the big ones one after the other. Uh, Pre-fish day was really good, it was windy, the fish were biting everywhere, it was, um, and the forecast looks the same for the next few days. So the only thing I don't like about the forecast is that it's not changing that wind, it's the same direction the whole time. If it changed, uh, that would really make, you know, make the banks that you don't fish one day, you can fish them the next day. So who knows, weather's not always right. Was is listening very intently here. <laughs> Wazza said he didn't have a good pre-fish, but day before the grand final, what everyone says on the bank, just believe the opposite usually. I'm a bit different, I just say what happens. Then people think you're saying the opposite, which means then you got them. Checkmate. I was speaking the truth, guys. So I think we're gonna, uh, let's untie this boat, go for a drive around. We've got about 10 minutes till the start. See if we can get this thing going. To button, which hopefully will record as well, so I can be live streaming and recording at the same time. And I really wished I pushed that button before I did the intro. This is how organised I am. This is super glue. This is just putting a bit of my rod back on, which I'm sick of falling out. I will probably end up super gluing the rod to the blank. This little winding check keeps on coming off. So I will probably end up gluing my hand to the rod there now. It's all right, worst place as it could be. Uh, that glue can go in here. So Simon, what we might do, we might get them to come in and then head out around those yellows maybe. If they come in close, you can take your photos. And uh, All right. Let's worry about, oh, yeah, I nearly stuck my finger to the reel already. Let's get this hydrowave on. Need to flip the accessories button. Anglers, good morning. Welcome to day one of the Costa Brim Grand Final on a beautiful sunny Lake Macquarie. All boats are checked out and ready to go. We'll get the official timepiece and see what we have. It is 6.49. We have 10 minutes until takeoff. When we do the start, we'll be going from right, so that's north, heading south. You'll file past the jetty and then you'll bank around to the right, idle past to the end of the yellow markers. 
you want to come nice and close so we can get plenty of photos. We, we, will, we will be live streaming the takeoff this morning. So everybody on the left will get you over on the right if you could. Just setting up this hydro wave to play some, some shrimp sounds because I think the prawns are running at the moment. We're going to put on 15 second delay about half volume. And that can hit the button on that when we get there. I think we're going good. I think we're recording, we're charging. Now all that's done, we can start worrying about catching fish. I actually don't know where I'm starting this morning. We're just gonna drive to the middle of the lake and see where the wind's on the bank, and we're gonna go that bank, which is standard Lake Macquarie practice when you don't know any spots. I don't even know why I untowed for, I'm second last. Why didn't I rig that thing? I remember at Foster one year, I was doing the draw myself, yeah. and I, the angler year was first, I pulled myself out second, I go, oh that's dodgy, I put it back in. It came out last. <laughs> That was no karma for doing the right thing, was it? Yeah. And you know what? Then Dizzy came up to me and goes, you rigged that? I go, yeah, I did rig it. I put myself back in because I didn't want it to see dodgy. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't believe it. Well, Thought I was rigging it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so the forecast for today is um, yeah. up to 15 knots to 20 knots of northeaster. Same as in the practice yesterday, so got fairly lumpy out there yesterday, but man, I love it when it's wind and sun. Wind and sun together, that pushes fish into, into structure, and that wind, um, there'll be some dirty water lines on the edge that uh, the fish sit in. Um, biggest fish in practice yesterday came um, right on the edge of one of those dirty water lines of the crankbait, so um, the practice didn't, really, uh, practice didn't really reveal much apart from the fact that the fish were biting. Um, an interesting bit of tackle I got from this weekend, let me see if I can get it out here, is this thing. So, I've um, in the last year or two worked out that if I'm not fishing cranker crabs then I'm giving myself a serious disadvantage. If I fish cranker crabs, often I'll, um, if I fish too, too hard, I'll pull the hooks out. So I've gone and got found in some international catalogues this rod from Daiwa. This is a, an edging rod and it's 8 foot 6 medium light so it's um, probably a foot and a half longer than the rods I use most time. Um, reminds me back of the bait fishing days where you fished with really small hooks and wanted to um out of the mouth. So I fished the crab on three pounds straight through on that. This is one of the new prototype Daiwa um, LT reels and we're doing a test on this at the moment for Tackle Junkie. This reel, I had 50 pound braid on a couple of weeks ago at the Barra Tour and a quarter metre Barra Mundi. Now I've got three pounds straight through on it and we're going to fish it for Cranky Crabs for Britain. We caught some great fish yesterday on it. So what a versatile reel, the LT reels. Just so they weigh nothing and that's a, actually a Sort of 4,000, no, 3,000 size reel. Looks like a 2,000 size reel. So, um, interesting bit of kit. And this is one of the real cheap ones as well, the Xella. I love my cheap reels. Who remembers the Australian Open with the $200 outfit? <laughs> $100 reel, $100 rod. Brim don't know what you're using. Although I guarantee that rod's not 100 bucks. Let's strap that down. Might be a little lumpy right at the start. Let's go for a drive around and see some boats. And Rob, you'll think it's weird because I'm talking to the stream half the day and talking to you half the day. No worries. So feel free to uh, feel free to sing out whenever. Let's just go and have a look at some of the boats. We're starting dead set, second last. That's just so you can get everyone on the camera. Yeah, exactly. You know what? Why don't I sit here and I know they'll be watching on Simon's live stream, so I'm just gonna sneak around to the end of the field. That boat in front of us there, that's uh, Heath Blakey. Heath uh, won that boat 2013 at the grand final. Bass Cat Margate. There's another grand final winning boat here too, uh, Grant Kime. He won the one last year at St George's Basin. Plenty of uh, prize boats still fishing this event, which is great. Uh, anyone who's uh, in the area wants to come to the weigh-ins, 2 o'clock every day at Rafferty's Resort at Cam's Wharf. Just drive into the resort, drive down the waterside, you'll find us. Welcome to come down. 
or you can watch it all of course on on Facebook live there's the Cadillac in front of us that's one of the many XD Fields boats in the field bet Brett Penn praise hope Tony Consol's got a hat tied on properly just tie that blonde hair and a knot around the top of it it won't fall off Son's been for a ride in that one. Oh, has he? Yeah. He loved it. Yep. Oh, man, it's like sitting in your couch. Going 100 k's an hour, isn't it? I don't mind starting last. My fishing is normally best between 9 and 12. Okay. I don't often catch limits in the first, first couple of hours. I reckon when that sun gets up, the brim get hungry. Here's... Um, uh, Mercury, one of our big sponsors, check out all the Mercs, Mercs everywhere. There's Russ Babacool, famous for complaining real hard about the tournament and then winning one. We call it the whinge then win pattern. He's got it mastered after years of practice. <laughs> um, on my stream here, I can see if there are people. There you go, so. Talking to yourself again? Nah, got a couple of viewers there. Doesn't like the charging accessory at times, so. Oh, but I do talk to myself all day, yeah. So we had a pretty good top order bite yesterday morning, which sort of died as the day went on, surprisingly. Normally top order bites get better, I think, but water temp's warm, 24.8 degrees. It's warm enough for Barra. I'll just tip this down for the start a little. Oh, we don't need to. I'll forget to tip it back up. Two and a half minutes to start. Ah, so what's your what's your go-to bait? What's your thing you're most confident in the world throwing? Uh, I seem to be enjoying the plastics at the moment. All right. Um, Z-Mans. We got plenty on Z-Mans yesterday. Yeah. Tommy McIntosh was out and he was catching one of the Z-Mans. So feel free to throw that at whatever. So we'll fish, we'll fish boats today. If it's rough, we'll crank bait them. If it's calm, we'll finesse them with crabs and Z-Mans. Yeah. We'll fish flats, we'll fish windy banks, we'll fish pontoons. I'll tell you what we won't fish, 20 foot of water in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I just don't know how to do it properly. Yep, that's good. <laughs> and I don't know where to go. I did it once with Anthony Thorpe here, we fished a Betts event or something together. He wanted to teach me how to do it. It was like trying to hammer in a bloody, trying to hammer in a nail with a donut. <laughs> just didn't work. Last minute inclusion as well. Well, Pete Makor fell out. Yeah. You know? Although he had a lot of boats off to him, he just I think he just had the shits that his boat blew up. That's <laughs> oh, good to see Thorpe here. Yeah, yeah. He'll you it. watch. He'll yeah, he'll he'll have a win in it. <laughs> well he had already qualified and declined, yeah. but he said yeah. he said if you um, want a hand I'll come and help you out. So we reached out. Nice. <laughs> Some pretty flash properties around this place, eh? There are. Mm -hmm. That rafty is pretty, it's a good looking uh, resort. Yeah, it's a little bit pricey. 
but it's and we've sort of been boned. Normally we do the thing on the front lawn here, but they've got weddings on, so ah. that's why they've boned us around the side a bit. Thirty seconds until the 2017 Costa Brim Grand Final starts. Hey, look at all the bass cats in the field. Where? Good question. Where is mine? I ordered it bloody years ago. It's true. That is true. Look at Wishy, titty bastard, Drew number two. Number two, he's taking. Number five, eight knots to that last yellow boy out there. Number four, page five. What a beautiful sight. Probably, what do you reckon? Two and a half million bucks worth of boats? Boats, uh, Seven yeah. figures worth of boats. Hey, Cromo! Get your ass behind me, Tiger, you last! <laughs> Ah, look, Cromo. I like Cromo. He does what you tell him to, eh? We'll have an accident now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch. He'll just reverse straight into another boat and blame me. I'll say, no, me not speak English. Laughing as he goes. Yeah. I've never seen Cromo down, eh? He's an optimist. Which you have to be in this sport. I was only joking, mate. It was all good. No, 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 no. I'm just streaming you, mate. I just wanted to see how you behaved when the world's watching. <laughs> you weren't like... By the world, like three people. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most rigged, rigged starting grid pattern I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, except for one, one fault with it. Hey? I'm with you. <laughs> But like if you were 40, they'd have to listen, but you're last, yes, I'm just going to go when everyone else is gone. I don't mind that late finish today, though. 2.40. 240 today. Did you know that? Ah. No, I'll just take, keep that in mind. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> Today's really. To work it out, you know, yeah, yeah. Although the other theory is maybe on the second day when it's tougher or the third day, yeah. Although we're all finished the same time on the last day, so. Pretty impressive sight, Cromo. Sorry? Pretty impressive sight. Yeah. A few million bucks worth of boats sitting there. Hey, it's only getting bigger. You could, you could be at work today. <laughs> And Bar, we're going to catch him on pink grubs tomorrow, by the way. Pink grubs? Pink grubs tomorrow. Got a good pink grub bike going yesterday. <laughs> Except they're for yellows, so it's like you're fishing them fast, eh? Like, <laughs> stop. <laughs> yeah. So you're doing extra rounds next year? You're going to Only one. The, the final as well? Uh, no, because it's hard enough to get this many people here in the one place, you know, so. I'd like to. You make more money. We cover more costs, especially if you're giving away the bass cat again, because you know we have to buy that. So it's a reasonably expensive exercise getting it all done. Good to be getting back to the Hawks Rick. Oh mate, I love it down there. Yeah, I'd, if I had my way, I'd run to Sydney Harbour Hawks for every year. My average finish on Sydney Harbour is like 2.5 or something. It's ridiculous. And I only fish it ever in a tournament, like once every couple of years, so. It just agrees with my shallow water fishing at that time of year. I've been there in winter. I can't catch anything there in winter. I might get five bites a day. Yeah. 
I've got the record for the biggest ever choke on the Hawkesbury. I was leading a Super Series there by over a kilo and a half going into the last day, and I didn't win. <laughs> and I caught four, only caught four fish on the last day. That was that is one of the best ever chokes in ABT history. There's Ross. Oh, look, missed the briefing, starting last. So he doesn't want anyone to know where he's going. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Ross. <laughs> Everyone knows where he's going. He comes fast at 200 kilometres an hour. He'll probably still need him. Yeah. Robinson. 40, 44, Steve Morgan. Go Queensland. I'm from New South Wales. Okay, <laughs> Mate, you don't mind siding with the winner, do you? <laughs> don't you wish you'd be cheering for Queensland? I literally don't know where we're starting. I'm just going to drive to the northern half and find a good look at I'm getting old, I don't drive fast anymore really.
say the wind's blowing this way, so let's go over that side. boats are all like this way, yeah. that wind's hitting and going that way down the point so we'll start up and come down. in the tournament? Uh, yep. Yeah, shit. Alright. Which way are they going to fish? I'll ask them. Which way are you going to go? Say that. If I was going that way, I'd start on this big rock point. <laughs> yeah. I caught two good ones up the other end of this yesterday, so. Let's start on this side of the rock point, fish our way around it. Yeah, it's got to hold some fear. Oh, yeah. Alrighty, oh. Let's go fishing. Man, this is just going to be junk fishing extraordinaire today. It'll be one of everything on the deck. So there's a crab. Here's a pink grub. Crab, pink grub. I want to pull out a crankbait. And a bent minnow because they're going to eat all those things. They'll eat a stick minnow too, but I don't think we need them. Right. Have some rods for aquas later on. And I'm going to swap between a crab on the pylons and a crankbait in between. Because most fish came from the in-betweens yesterday. A 
bit of, there's a bit of northwest in that I reckon today. I'm gonna swing the nose this way, Robbie. Just let it float around. Let's get to catching. I'm just going to swing the nose around when you want that one in. Get it sitting right with the... Yeah, well don't be afraid to fish this stuff in between because it's high tide, remember too, they'll be out cruising. So I'm going to bounce between this crankbait. Fish on, Robbie's on in the back. Need net. Rob's onto a good one. Oh yeah, that's a good start. I'll just get him, I'll come down and get him. Okay, yep. Don't let him get back in there. Come here, mate, come here, mate. Come here, come here, come here. Ooh, come here. Nice work, son. There you go. One in the well. Uh, I'll turn that live well on. How's that for a start, Robbie? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just normal start. Yeah, bit, slow. bit slow, didn't get one on the first couple of casts. Thirty fork. Yep. That's a giant. We'll take that. Uh, that'll be on there. Righty, eh? Throw him in on your side. We'll keep that as a small. That'll be the small side. Happy. Hey, guess what happened in the first five minutes of the Australian Open? Got a thirty to the fork. Good work, mate. <laughs> We're off and racing. Bag full of 30s every day, I will take it right now and not even go out. He was out on the beach too, wasn't he? Just he middle of nowhere. Yeah. We'll find as the, day, as the tide drops during the day, they'll pull more structure, but while it's windy and tides up, they're out feeding in those shallows. What a great start. More bites up the back? Super. Fish on. Oh, I missed him. <laughs> yeah, they, are, they he hit within two meters of the bank, that one. They're up on the bank. Thirty fork. I love it. Bag full of thirty forks weighs three kegs. And everyone's saying there's big weights, but you know what? Three kegs a day is going to be strong, I reckon.
Now nearly every house in this place has got a set of rails running down next to the pylon, next to their um, jetty to launch their boats with. That was a real good spot yesterday on the rails. It's like this whole lake's been designed for a brim fisherman, hasn't it? <laughs> True story. I'm gonna do something, which is probably silly. I'm gonna take off my white bet minnow. You know, I'm gonna replace it with this. A white rebel popper. Holds the water a bit better. And I reckon it just needs to move a bit more water to get found today. While it's still calm enough to fish a top water, Let's do it. We had some good fish come up to top waters yesterday. Oh, there's one under it, look. Straight away, look, see him on it? Whole pack of them. It's the little ones. That's a good sign though, look how, look how upwards looking they are. Throw in there and um, throw them yeah, behind it, see if you can catch it. Behind. Yeah, yeah, fuck it. Pardon language. <laughs> like when I say throw them behind it too, throw right on top of my popper. Because if there's a pot of them underneath like that, they'll They'll compete for that thing as it drops down. I did that with uh, Scott Butler on the port spree, but it was more... Parallel, yeah. If you bring him out from the boat... So yep. You'd have three or four following, and as soon as he hooked up... Throw in and catch him. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll be doing that today. If, I, if anyone's winding in, there's a fish behind it, get onto it. They were pretty receptive to the switchbait yesterday. Yeah, That live well will be full, let's put it on auto. Let's drop a crab on this on the way through. Oh, oh you jackass. Oh, it came out. <laughs> yeah, she's blown. That's right, that'll get the fish biting. Our biggest one yesterday was 34. I think we had three over 30 yesterday, so. If we get the same sort of bag today, I'll be stoked.
I didn't get one on those rails up there. You throwing a little Z-Man? Yeah. I'm throwing an SX40. Well, there he is. Little. Hooked in the side of the head. No, don't in that. Don't in that. He is literally hooked in the side. <laughs> and it's a tar wine. And every cast, I'm just picking the right bait to do it. So that cast there was over some shallow, weedy stuff, so didn't really want to crankbait it. But the top water will swim over the top of it fine. Is that a fish behind it? Oh, yeah. Like, I, I've never caught one of those real big ones in here, like about maybe 37 forks, about the biggest I've caught. A bit over a kilo, but yeah, there is. There's just donkeys in here, and there. Oh, look at that, there's one behind my lure. Eat it. Oh, see that? That was, that was a good fish. You're right behind it, right in. Yeah. No, no, you want to cut. Yep. That was actually a good fish. He just didn't, wasn't really committed to it, though. Yeah, don't be afraid to throw right on top. When there's a pack of them like that, especially. Oh, yeah. And we're now fishing secondhand water that Callum's already fished this morning, but I reckon he'll be... I reckon he'll be hitting the docks with the... I don't think he'll be fishing in between them much. And I don't know, I love it when you, they swirl it. You don't know if they're big or not until the swirl's the size of a bin lid. Then you go, hmm, that was a reasonable fish. There's a money cast coming now over these rails. So if you've just joined the live stream, we're uh, one in the bin for 30 centimetres, that's 600 grams. Rob caught that on a Z-Man. Had a bit of action on um, a few bites on cranks and top waters, but Z-Man's put the fish in the boat so far. It's blowing about 10 to 15 from the northwest this morning. It'll swing around to the northeast as this day goes on, I bet. Oh, look at that one. Come on. Oh. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Still there. That's a brim or a squid. I don't know. It's a squid, that is. <laughs> see, the, see the ink it left? That's not uncommon. We get uh, squid on top waters all the time in Morton Bay. Looked a bit dark for a brim. Apparently you just take a live squid over to that point on the other side there and you catch heaps of them. Big, big kingies.
pound up. Oh yeah. We don't get too many up in my way. Not even close anyway. They're all out in the ocean and in my part of the world. The big kingies. All right, I'm just gonna go to a crankbait because they're not that receptive. Well, none of them have crunched that top water. Look at the pile of weed in there. <laughs> That's the northeaster pushing that into the bay yesterday, all that weed. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna, while you fish that bank, I'm just gonna throw a couple of crabs on these boats. just because those boys didn't fish it. Just keep on throwing her in. It's only six or eight foot deep here. Oh yeah. I never saw any yesterday under the boats at all. Just keep on throwing those, yeah. Because I think that's the highest percentage chance is up on that bank, but this is the teamwork deal. You just keep on filling the live well up and I'll muck around with all the boring stuff. There's a fish. So that would have been a snapper, a little rattle. All right, I think we need to move and get out from behind these guys. Let's go around the corner. I told you there was none under boats. <laughs> What's that? That's got a leather jacket under there. Uh. A little leathery. The I caught some on crabs yesterday. John, I took them home to eat. Apparently, they're pretty good to eat. That'd be a good stretch, that. Yeah. Nice rocky stretch, yeah. And the wind's blowing into it.
stretch there. That bit, then we might do that bit. Alright, we're back in. Just decided you to uh, hit me have a leak. You got plenty of room at the Yeah, yeah they're, they're pretty beamy. Yeah. So this is gonna go on the market soon. I ordered a bass cat the other day. I think this is since I've had this one, this is my old man's old boat. It's got new decks, new seats, new motor, new trailer, new electronics. You always have a look at your trailer. Nice. Yeah, it's only probably a year and a half old. So look at the nice rock shelves we've got out here. I'm gonna get something on this. And I think it's top water time. This has got less wind on it, which I probably don't like, but. Look at that, nice high tide. Little popper blooping away. Where are you, big unit? Oh yeah, that was awesome. I would have loved to have had the pole camera then. So, you know, this camera here, you can't really see the fish coming out to eat it, but with the pole, you can. I, if it, I thought it would be rougher than this today, and I think it is going to get rougher than this today, so yeah. that's why I haven't got the big pole. If you do that, and then set up the pole that each time. all your fishing time so I want to having the camera down here is a decent enough balance oh. nice little guttering behind those rocks <laughs> oh that high camera is still when you're down the back you can't see it they have got a big range, they're about 160, 170 degrees, these, these Garmin's. We use Garmin's for all this live streaming stuff. Oh, there's a little one, top water. Yeah, little ears. You just got a bite, didn't you? Yep. I could tell. <laughs> Oh, I'm 
Well, it only, you know, this is water only, what, moves about a foot, I reckon, in the lake. Like, I'm not a local here, but that's just my observations. Anywhere that's got no current, you need the wind. And that's good, though. That's like, you know, what's that, five knots, ten knots blowing on this stuff? That's perfect. And I've literally never fished this spot ever in my life. I'm just fishing here because it's the conditions are good, so. I'm not fishing any history in this place at all. Sometimes that's not a bad thing. Oh! I don't think that was a brim. I hope it's a brim. He pounded it, didn't he? Silver. Might be a tailor or something, I reckon. Yeah, it's a tailor, I think. See how, he's, how fast he's moving? Oh, is it a... I don't think it's a brim. I still think it's a tailor. He's moving too fast. No, it's a whiting. <laughs> it's a whiting. How savage do you hit that? That's a big whiting. I caught one bigger yesterday. <laughs> They're just giant, the whiting, in this spot. He ate it while the lure was stationary too, which is weird for a whiting. Normally they like it moving. How is that? <laughs> for a donkey, what do you reckon he is? About 35, 38 centimetres? Donkey. I reckon we caught nearly 10 species yesterday in the pre-fish. This place is alive this late. We caught whiting, brim, leather jacket. What else do we catch? Pike. Some other weird things. All right, let's get back to the crane boat. This is really shallow, any? Uh, oh yeah, I heard about that. Loaded up some um, and uh, put them all out in the middle because of the heat and massive Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bet you they're all uneducated too, those things. Yeah. They're all out there. So they might not be anymore. Yeah. Too shallow to fish a creek bait. We're like, what are we, 40 foot off, 50 foot off the bank and it's a foot and a half deep. Let's try the pink grub for the first time this morning.
Oh. Is that eating it? Brim. Too small. Man, this looks awesome out here, doesn't it? It's all broken bits of rock and shells, weed. Everything a growing brim will need. It's one of those razor clams on the bottom. I think it's not windy enough here. I think we're gonna have to we're gonna have to go and find a windier bank. Although it was this windy yesterday morning they were they were chomping, so I'm really loving this long rod for the crabs. Easy to cast, fights the fish well. It's eight foot six. We'll go get it if you want. Yeah. The only ones we don't get are when they're 20 foot down. Don't want a cameo for the snag retrieval. <laughs> yeah, no, sometimes the wind wins. This is junk fishing at its best this morning. We've got four lures on the deck, a pink. A little white popper, crab, and a crankbait. We're just uh, trying to find what they're going to really commit to. The popper, they're sort of, it needs to maybe, I don't know if it needs to be a little bit uh, windier for them to commit to it. I mean, there's bait everywhere in this place. Bait city. So I'm using this popper to fish this real shallow stuff where the crankbait with all the crab and where they'd all snag on the bottom. I'm using a cup based popper to just so they can find it a bit easier than a bent minnow. It's when the Scots got a bit of waves on the water, you just I reckon you just need that bigger presence. Now we're coming up to that. Now we are coming up to this. I'm going to try crabbing it. You can tell. When Rob gets a bite, he goes like this. <laughs> As we all do. 
The worst one for that is Steezy. You see when Steezy gets a bite, he's like this. He's like, he's like a, an inch from mobile phone and everything and him going in. I'm just pitching at each of these legs as we go past. I'm thinking the fish should be out on the flats, but let's let the fish tell us what's going on. We're just gonna fish everything. So there's a couple of pretty cool prizes giving away this uh, this grand final. We've got a pair, matching pair of four point, I think they're 4.1 metre bluefin boats. They've got full deck, live wells, flow right system, power pole, sounders. Got a 30 horsepower Merc electric start in it. It's like ready to go. And non boater, non boater, both get the same prize. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It is cool. I worked out that I asked Simon the other day, I said, how can we charge boaters cheaper than non-boaters? We should have charged the same this one because it's the same price. Yeah. All right, back to the crankbait. I don't know if that's over you, Ron. I might tangle up anyway. Yeah, yeah, well, normally those sand patches are full of cockles. No, nah, Belmonts. Further off? Other side. If you look right on the other side where those boats are in the distance, that's yep. Belmont. We're on the western side. That's Wangi Wangi Point there. Or if you're Queensland, you call it Wangi Wangi. Is that a fish? Nah, it's a bit of weed or something. No. I think it's a broom actually. Jeez, he just sort of. Oh, it's up. Across the beams, right there. Don't worry, just leave yours loose and we'll sort it out later. The brim, I think. Let's put this pedal. There you go. Let's give me that line. I'll just bring the line here. Let's go. That's it. I'll get. I'll just go over there. That's it. You got it. Hey, you might be a keeper. Doing the side of the head on the crankbait. Well done. I think you'll go. I'm at 25. Yeah, 25 fork, you'll go close. It was a real weird bite, he sort of picked it up and swam with. On the, the S. I got it, didn't, I didn't think it was heavy at all. I thought it was a yeah. one. Yeah, it was like hitting it, up. swimming out. <clears throat> so there it is, should go legal. We'll take the bag fillers while we haven't got a limit. Uh, he is, yeah he's 28. That'll do. He can still go. It's two. 30 to 28, that's probably just a bit over a kilo for two fish. How handy is that power pole for? Just uh, keeping everything in order while we're getting, getting our stuff together.
So that was on the little uh, little SX40. See if he's got any mates in there. Yeah, they hang around in packs in this place, that's for sure. The rougher it gets, the more I use the crankbait. Unless you use the, uh, the top waters. Check out an old mate on the bobcat with his phone. Multitasking. Get the next job lined up. Fishing this SX40 on a, uh, man, this is like a 10 year old crankbait rod I got now. It's a uh, Norris Trout Program. Very parabolic taper. For me, crankbaiting is all about keeping the hooks in their pie hole once they get it in. So soft action noodle rod. Well it's not, it's sort of soft action but it's the strongest soft action rod I can I can find. Biggest fish we got yesterday Rob was like on a flat like this just middle of nowhere halfway out. I stopped retrieving and I went to look at something on my phone and he ate it on the paws. Someone was sending me a message, didn't know I was doing important things. That's why the phone today is buried. Man, that looks so good, that dock. <laughs> Let's work it properly. That's the power pole down. Let's uh, throw a couple of crabs in the nasty spots. This is a mix of rock and weed and gravel on the bottom here. Only about, what, two and a half foot deep? Just that shade pocket in there looks pretty tempting. Like yesterday, they, uh, they didn't really go the crabs that well until the afternoon, until the tide dropped out. Let's try a pink grub in the back corner, over the shallows. in the back corner along those rails. Come on you big units, I know you're in those rails. I know you want to steal this lure and I oh, don't see it again.
Rude. Nice looking rock point here too. Got to respect anything that's got a cardinal mark on the point of it. Fish. That's all right. Could be a big one swimming at you. All right. There's a neural nice rock bar, which I would have approached much differently if I had known it was this good. Man, there's got to be something on this thing. It's got wind blowing on it. It's got oystery things all over it. How good does it look? Oh yeah, those suspending little teardroppy things. They're awesome, those things. I just want to throw three different lures all at the same time. Yeah. I want to throw a pig grab, a top water, and a crankbait. I'm just going to have to rotate. Uh, that real shallow stuff. They get in that stuff, eh? Yeah. Oh, you jackass. Got it out of the shallows there. That's nice. I reckon one of the best places in Australia to fish a top water is in, not even in Middle Harbour, in Sydney Harbour itself. If you find little isolated pockets of rock, they've like always got big brim on them. Come on. Oh yeah, rock, point, rock points are good. Rock points up in Cowan are good. Main River, oh, that was a fish underneath it that spooked when he saw the boat. I like everything about Sydney that's on the water. When are you moving down? No, I see anything that on the land sucks. <laughs> Man, 90 minutes. We get complained when it's 20 minutes in Brisbane. It's like, ah, traffic's rubbish. Let's back to crankbait for that car. Bites. Come on. 
So we have 22 viewers at the moment, and the update is we have two fish in the well, a 30 to the fork that Rob got on a Z-Man, sort of straight up. I've got a 28 to the fork on a SX40 crankbait. Yeah, little peckers. So it's been sort of consistent, if not red hot, I think. We're fishing this rock point that I've never fished before, but it looks awesome. And I don't intend to fish many spots more than a day in a row here, because I'm pretty, I'm pretty aware that they wear out. So it'd be a lot of exploring every day. It's hard work and sometimes to leave spots that you've caught fish before, but fresh fish every day is what keeps it interesting. Yeah, that's right. It's got to be a part of it by the last part of this event that people haven't smashed. And even if they have, and the, you know, weather changes, or if there's a pack of fish, if there's packs of fish in these, like I'll go back to a spot if I can see, a, if I catch a fish and there's 10 other good ones come out of it, I'll go back there half an hour later and catch them. They're not, they're not that smart. But if there's just one local fish on every dock, the guys that fish this event are good enough to pick most of them off, you know? The other gold you can find is you find places where people feed them, you know. I saw a place yesterday where a lady went and threw a bit of bread in and they all... I, w I wasn't clever enough to put it in the GPS though, <laughs> which I regretted later. That's the sort of spot you want to stop. You learn that when you fish the Gold Coast a lot. You learn where they feed them. Oh, look how giant it is. <laughs> Can I keep it, Pa? Shark it in the bucket, son. Shark it in the bucket. Now, I would especially like to welcome to the live stream everyone who's watching this from their work. You thought you had good ways of wasting time at work? Well, a whole day of live streaming can do it as good as test cricket. <laughs> Over top of me. Hey, that's nice how they put that padding on the front for you to oh, throw that lure in. Eh? <laughs> Natural approach, straight off. So I think it's getting a bit calm here now. We're going to have to relocate, I think. I am tempted to fish those boats though. Let's just give it 10 minutes fishing those boats just to make sure we're not missing out on a 
some sort of deep water bite that's going on. Because I'm pretty sure that the fish that sort of live on these docks move out onto the beaches, but I don't think the ones from the boats come into the beach every tide. I reckon that's, I reckon they're different fish. Over those rails there, Robbie. I like that sort of stirred up dirty water. And that's a good thing. Mmm. It's that dirty water I got the biggest finish in yesterday. It was when it was roughing up on the bank. I'll just do these three boats here. If we get a bite on these three boats, we'll fish more. If not, we're gonna go for a ride to find somewhere windier. Little snapper pecking at it. Another snapper pecking. That's where we had the uh, briefing for a lot. All right, last cast on this little boat here, and then we're going.
All right, let's get out of this dump. So the update is two fish. One on a crankbait, one on a uh, one on a plastic. Let's go find a nasty old windy bank.
this looks messed up enough. Looks good. Just a bit more open here and yeah. flowing through. Sort of funneling down the lake yeah. a bit. What time is it? Half past eight. Probably about an hour away from our first kicker of the day. I don't catch big fish until after nine in the morning. Against union rules. Still on Queensland time. That's right, oh, it's even an hour earlier. Queensland time, isn't it? Damn it. Oh wait a sec, no, it is 9.30 in Queensland. No, it's 8.30. Yeah, mate. Cows don't know when to make the milk. Surprised there's no boats on this thing. Oh, this is the prime looking bank. This lake just eats boats, eh? There's fish. Let's throw. Don't think it's legal. I'm pretty sure it's not legal. Ooh, see that one behind it? Oh. Good. There's a fish on the floor. I've got a hook in my finger. Got two hooks in my finger, no, only one. Is it a little one? There you go. In past the barb. Pull it out. Mm. That hurts. I'm going to just yank straight out. You right? Eh, it's even further than I thought. Let me put the power pole down. I'm gonna come off the timber and do it. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, I just need a bit of heavy line to pull it out with. Normally, the normally I can just push against it, push Have you down. Got some heavy. Oh, like I think I only got six. Nah, it's not gonna be heavy enough. Yep. So all I'll do. Just wanna. Maybe he's push, he pushed down on the top of that. There it is. There you go. No worries, mate. It's only like the 200th time I've ever done that. A bit tender for the next little. It's no worse than a brim spike. It's probably better than a brim spike because it's probably cleaner. Well, I thought I had it in two fingers then, but the other one wasn't past the barb. That was a good move. That went from no bites for uh, 15 minutes to a double hookup. Best story I heard was um, Shawnee Taylor. I'm pretty sure one day he had a lure stuck up under his seat in his car. He put his hand up to get it and he ended up hooking himself one hook in the lure, one hook in the carpet. <laughs> He was sitting there for ages before someone found him. So whenever I think I've hooked myself pretty good, I think well, maybe I've done all right. It could always be worse. I like the breeze. And also this is a bit of a point, you know. It wasn't accidental we pulled up on this part of the bank. A little point jutting out.
Tarwine. We got a few Tarwine yesterday. We're toying with the idea of allowing Tarwine to be weighed in. Like, it's not as if you can... No, they're the same, yeah. They're the same, yeah, exactly. We might try that for 2018 in one of the real changes. With a bag of Tarwine. Well, you know, just something different, and if there's different places that you can catch them, it just opens up another avenue for develop some techniques, so... It'll save all the people that have tried to bring them in or didn't know what the difference was in the past, it'll make them happier. What's that? I'm assuming there's yeah, I think there's tar one over there. Yeah. I wonder who named a tar wine. Who saw that fish and go, you know, what I'm going to call that. I'm going to call it a tar wine. You missed the tar wine. <laughs> oh, fish on little. Look how little he is. He's just got nana drag as a slight line. Looks like a snapper. No, I don't need a net. It's alright. Little pinky. Robbie's the only one too. No, missed him. God's sake, come here mate. You want me to hook myself again, don't you? Man, this thing, I can smell this thing against the wind. It smells like snapper. While we're here, let's just drop a crab. Ooh. Drop a crab under there. Suicide cast. <laughs> the crab's way under. There's the fish. <laughs> he did. I don't need a net. I don't think he's legal. <laughs> he might be. It's pretty skinny. That was in between two little pylons on the crab. I don't think he's legal. This guy will go 24. You reckon? I've just been on the Barra tour, so I maybe my, my eye is a bit out. He is 24 and a half. Close. Yeah. It shows you how close to the boat that they. They eat those things. That looks good in there. There's like a little rock or bommy or something in there. That's where it is. I think I haven't had a good crankbait bite all year. I'm happy we got a Finally have an opportunity to throw a crankbait. Yeah, yeah, there's been no real, the arenas sort of don't suit it, so.
Oh yeah, there's some flash houses in this place. We're in about, what, five foot of water here? I can sort of just see the bottom. So we've got a bit of gravel on the bank, a bit of weed. Rob's winding in a fish. That looks like a bit of size in it, eh? He's going to be another one of them 20. Oh, we'll net him. He's getting smaller, isn't he? Yes. The closer he's getting, the smaller he's getting. Oh! <laughs> Net, man. <laughs> I'm not good on the net, I'm telling you now. I never promised I was good on the net. I reckon he's 24. But if he goes 25, I'm happy. We'll take another bag filler. out later. In beside my, oh, down here, there should be, in that little cup holder, there should be a couple of little clips with snap swivels on them. Make sure you get the one with the snap swivel on it. Just put it through. The yeah, that, that makes it easier to, um, easier to find him later on. Good work, Rob, getting touched up from the back of the boat here, as usual. Two one. It's on the Z-Man again. On the grub. So just put it through the. If you open his mouth a bit, you yeah. put it through the side of his. Through that. Oh, through that. Yeah. Through that. Yeah. Through that soft bit there, and out of his out his mouth. And then when you pick him up, it's not um, it's not rubbing on anything. Sometimes it's hard to get through, but there you go. Just makes it easy to find him later on. You know, when we got four thirty nines in there. Good work, sir. Three down, two to go. This is Queensland weather, this warm northerly, eh? Yeah. Bit of humidity in it. Heading up in January. Gold Coast or? Flounder. Nice. Um, talk to Jimmy Reed. Hey, uh, Mangrove Jack. Nice. At night when the family's in bed, you can take you out, sneak around and get one. So you're doing the right things by the family and yeah. still getting your mangrove jack. Yep. That's right, you put up with that to catch a jack. All right, we have 20 viewers waiting for something to happen. Well, plus us, 22 waiting for something to happen. Uh, we have three in the well now. A just legal, a 28 and a 30. Just got my first fish on a crab before. I expect the crab bite to get better as the day goes on. It's the bottom. Oh, it's probably on those rails. Uh, 
<laughs> uh, and it's on a rail. Let me get that off. I know. Oh, I'll hook up heaps of heaps of stuff today on the in the snag department. They're good, aren't they? They're just good to pivot on and I really like them because when you want to stop, you can turn your electric motor around and do that. Yeah. And that just wrecks the fishing, so no brims liked that backwash. Quietly. Oh, there's one under. Come on, eat it. Eat it. Oh, there's about, look at them, 20 juniors. Shouldn't you be in school, kids? They are in a school. <laughs> Come on, big unit. I don't mind the little clouds of little fish. Look at that, there's more little ones. First big fish I got in the last day of the open was exactly like that, a little tiny cloud of fish. And then they all just scattered and the big one come up from underneath them, so I don't mind them being there. Get a crab on this. Throw a crab on this boat, then we're going to move. We're going to find another bank where the wind's pushing on because when it gets into the bay here, it looks like it's not pushing on it as hard. Yeah, I think so, but we haven't done that good on moored boats yet. You'd be a moored boat specialist from Sydney Harbour, wouldn't you? Oh, I don't like them. Yeah. Oh, that was weed, I think. I don't think that was a fish. Didn't feel like a fish. You got your, I think your line's twisted around your tip too. Not right, but when you bind in, you might have to. See how that's sort of doing a lap around it? When you wind in. Yeah. All right, let's move again. Sneak across to Belmont. See if there's enough wind on some.
No, this is perfect. I'm just pack the wet weather gear. I'm going to. Um, oh, and it's supposed to rain tomorrow, but I'm going to fish the inside line of boats in here. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, you never know. It might storm. Who knows? Wouldn't be the first time there's been a storm after a northerly. Now this is fishing history. I have caught good fish on this. I fished the rear, the inside line of boats. I'm always a fan anywhere in Australia of the shallowest moored boats you can find. Yep. Seems the shallow ones are either easier to fish or more receptive to the stuff that I fish anyway. So this is around, hopefully these are only in about three foot of water still. And it is pretty clear and it isn't that windy, so I might possibly go down to two pound line. Let's start off on the three pound straight through though. You got any uh, S-Factor? I'll borrow a bit just to throw it on. Thanks. Never have to buy S-Factor, non boaters always have it. <laughs> well, that's yours, I think. Is it? Oh, good. That's right, someone left it in my boat. Never bought, a never bought one yet. And I don't reckon you really need it. Black broom, I reckon. I Black broom, I reckon. But yellow fin. No, it definitely helps. All right. There's one, I can see one under that boat. In front of the keel, there's a couple. Get a bit closer in there. Oh, Freaking pike just bit me crab off. All right, I'm gonna catch that one on there. See what you can do. Bloody crab. I reckon the S-Factor made the pike eat that. <laughs> Little bastard. See, you put S Factor on your lure, everything goes wrong. That's what the evidence is pointing to. You're swapping from a Z man, is that a gulp shrimp or something? The hardest part of catching a fish on a cranky crab is getting it out of the box. <laughs> I'm as dexterous as a hippopotamus. Up, down, it's still shallow in here. Shallow, shallow. We like shallow. I reckon there's a big one under this boat, I can see it. Well, old mate's in there, so I don't want to hit the boat, but there is some. I reckon there's a school of them. See them behind the keel, they're gone now. I reckon they're looking at the crab. See them all there? See them around the keel? Yep. I think, that, oh, there's one following the crab, little fella. Oh, mate's inside that too. See him in there?
Now, I've got to pull out the sticky on two pound too. It's still in the box here. Got one of my good fish yesterday on the sticky. And we all know that around moored boats in clear water, they like the sticky. Fresh hooks on it last night. So these um, sand patches too have fish on them. Big old shadow. There's a broom, swam off. I had a fish on one of these boats once, so I hooked it on one side, it went under the other side, got caught on the keel, took a whole heap of line, couldn't get it out, so I had to go around the other side of the boat, pick up the line and then hand line it in. It's like, I'll take any of those captures. Put one on the mooring, boys, not mooring block first. Can't tell me this has got no broom under it. 10,000 seagulls. The biggest one I got on the flat on the 
these sort of boats yesterday was actually on a just fish in an open area. Yeah. yeah I was looking at that wing, it was so similar. On the car park. Yeah. yeah. Just run the hard bit and he's going to stop. Yep. Give that a go. Yep. More inbox of very Days, Robbie's hooked up on a shallow crankbait. I don't know if we can put the, the pole down. It looks like he might be. It looks like he might go. Nice one. Yeah, mate. Good work, sir. Actually, you've got three in the box now. I love shared weight. Whoever invented that was a genius. What's What's that for? Nah, that's right. We'll get rid of him anyway. Nah, if their mouth's shut, they don't change, eh? It's often when you measure them the first time they got an open mouth. 28, super. Throw them in the same side. Yep, that side. crank was that on? Cranker. Oh, that little cranker. Nice. Nine o'clock, we got four in the box. I'm happy with that. Because the fishing's going to get good now.
but I twitched the stick now and he did a big circle around it, looking at it. Ah, yes, this is much better than being at work, isn't it? That could be a problem. Why the cast is long? Definitely fish follow on this, each cast. If only catch one fish on the flats, fish on the flats, it's like, ah, don't worry about the boats. <laughs> flats are where they're at. I just got bitten off by a pike again, I didn't even feel it go. <laughs> Bloody pike. Mongrels. I find it just like you're afraid to handle it. Yeah, I find that as well. And then you get also get less broom. <laughs> so I don't mind. I've got enough of these things to not worry about losing a couple. This one's a this I wouldn't have fished this one for ten years. I last fished this one here, this is a Berkeley stick minnow. I would have fished this with Scotty Tanner when we spent a day fishing on the uh, at the mouth of the Bem River. We were sinking it down 30 feet and catching big fish on it. This thing. That thing here, a little, uh, but I like that honey sort of colour on the flat. That's that's a good colour, I reckon. And that's going to cast a long way too. And if a pike bites it off, I don't care. Another bite? Yep. Ah, oh, they've got a pretty hard old mouth here, Brim. Pretty dusty old mouth. That's weed, it wasn't a fish. That was me letting it sink too far. Let's go left field, let's try that top water out here.
up, big fish. Damn it. Come on. I wound the crab up and he just... Oh, he's still looking at it on the bottom. That's not him though, it's a different one. Damn it. I was sort of just swimming the crab out. I thought there was nothing eating it and then... He was a big dark fish too, eh? He was one of the locals. One of the old locals. Oh, he was like 36, 38. He was like a big one. Yeah, prop on. I'm glad we've seen him though, because we're in the right area. Is that pink rub? You might see it slower. No, they're mullet. I thought they were big brim. <laughs> Little eyes. What happened? Right. Where is it? Uh, it's right up there. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> the crank is gone. I've got more of them in there if you need them. It's got to sacrifice one of the fish gods after you get one just to keep it happy. I might fish the front of this marina wall and all these poles in here.
Last time I fished the outside of this marina, I got big estuary perch. You think so? A bit of wind blowing on it, but I've never caught any brim off it. That's right. Hey, it's, I'm fishing the conditions. Wind blowing into it. Last time I fished this wall, cranker crabs weren't invented. <laughs> they might change the game a bit. Do you need that little cranker? I've got heaps of them. Yeah, that colour. Nice colour. Oh, it's out of whiting, Taylor. Oh yeah, that little honey colour would be alright.
We're just going to get to the end here. We'll, um, I think we'll go and find somewhere windier again. I did see one good fish in there, but he was not, not playing the game. Oh, what's that? There's one fired it up. <laughs> oh, you're not allowed to throw inside the yep. marina, so yeah. Throw on the edge. group of boats over there the wind might be blowing on a bit harder that yep. you can crank bait in between as well yep. we're going to do that let's do it there's none on this edge no bites let's get out of here follow the wind We've got a 30, a 30, 228 and a Jester. Yep. A Court Jester. And what we really want is five over, 30 or over. I'm not being greedy, that's just, what, that's just stating facts. That's just like the kid with his Christmas list. Just want five, everything over 30 I weighed in this tournament. Well, Christmas is coming up. That's right. Uh, what do we got in the food department? Oh, is it bad like to have a banana cake? Is banana cake the same as bananas? That's healthier than other cakes. <laughs> I don't think there's anything healthy about this cake.
break our way in here. Alright, I'll get sideways. And an SX40 we're throwing. What's that called, that cranker? It's the, it's the crankbait. That's why jet skis are so popular. <laughs> Maybe he stirred the fish up for us. Like, it's not hard to go around, is it? Crank bait this hole just because I'm too lazy to swap over. I'd be surprised if these haven't been hit already, these boats, this morning.
right, more cranking baits. So many bait fish in here, little bait fish everywhere, look at them. Ah, they're scared. In the definition of boats that should have brim on them, that one's in the, the picture of that one's in there. And in the, peak, the pic, picture of the awesomest cast, would have video of that one right there. Come on, mate. I think we nearly have to give up on these shallow boats, I don't think they're on them. Let's go back to those banks with a bit of wash on it, yeah. bit of rock, bit of weed, bit of everything. Oh, that should have something under it, shouldn't it? It's not happening. Let's just do this one over here. We'll do that one on the way out too. That's just that old crapper. Uh, idle us up here. Grab this one. Worst cast ever.
right, it's not happening, let's move. Rightio, that wind's actually dropping down, I reckon. Uh, what am I doing? I'm looking for the battery pack for the camera. The iPad's not charging. The camera's good. Let's get that iPad charging so it doesn't run out this afternoon. It's not agreeing with the charger. So let's put it in that. See how that goes. We've been up for three hours now. The stream's going real good. It's, uh, yep, it's a whole lot of 4G. Yeah, 
Yeah, I sort of saved him yesterday. I started here and went for a pre-fish, so. Some good times on in the past. <laughs> It squeaks out. <laughs> the natural crab falling in approach. Oh. Missed him? On the Seaman Slim Swim. I reckon that's the most prolific plastic in anyone's box, that motor oil coloured Z-Man, isn't it? Yep. It catches them. Oh, that feels like a good one. Is that a, it's a whiting. Looks like a whiting. It's just a big whiting. <laughs> Another one. No, it's not a whiting plant, right? It's a bonefish. I don't know, I wish I was catching brim as big as I was catching whiting. That's a donkey, that thing, again. Oh. <laughs> I should take a feed of them home. Dinner. Yeah. Another one of them. There's no such thing as a small whiting. That is enormous. That is a... <laughs> Look at the head on it. It's just enormous. Come here, mate. You gotta put that up against the camera. <laughs> Look at that thing, it's just a donkey. Let's see how long it is. 
It's a donkey whiting. Is he bigger than 40? He's uh, about 42 to the tip. Giant. Giant whitings. On an SX40, that one. Well, that one ate this morning. It was a popper, wasn't it? Yeah. That one was bigger. Wasn't it? I think that was... This one was bigger than the first one, I reckon. Still. That would have had to be 600 grams, that whiting, I reckon. Whiting comps now. You know what you do, you'd catch all these brim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This savage is a whiting in this place, aren't they? Savage. <laughs>